Yes, look at those blue skies. Look at those little fluffy clouds. We can only be in one place. It's La La Land and it's Mr. Kong. How you doing? Pete? I'm good. Yeah, we all we all dance good on. We all we're all dancing on the roof of cars all the time here. That's that's the way life is. <laughs> hey, hell yeah! From a uh, slightly grey England at the moment, we're hoping for some sunnier weather next week. Come people, and we are so sharp. Get get a look at those gold discs up there, people. This is Mr. <laughs> Kong's office. All right. Uh, yeah, common people. So, Pete, um, you are coming to headline our, our little festival in Southampton and Oxford. How's that feel? Uh, it's an honour, of course, and slightly bizarre and um, a little bit nerve-wracking, I guess. Don't get nervous about many things these days regarding DJing, but this this whole journey with the Heritage Orchestra and with Jules Buckley has been pretty incredible. Um, it just it, you know, from doing the Albert Hall a couple of years ago to, to standing there at the O2 uh, last December, seeing the album do so well. So this is the year we take it to another level and we and we bring it to festivals for the first time. You you very kindly have invited us. You're you're taking <laughs> and you're getting us out in, in in a festival environment for the first time. So super excited um, and hopefully we'll put on a good show. I'm sort of, I'm sort of honoured that you you say it's nerve wracking. I sort of feel like that means you're you know, you're really like putting your all into this because you know you interview some people and they're like yeah yeah you know really looking forward to it and you can just tell it's just another day in the a day in the park another day in the office. But I mean this is a, this is a pretty mad project that you've dreamt up here. So yeah, I think I, th- I think that's the thing. It's always been um, you know from us getting asked to do a prom. We had six months to think about it. I'd never done anything like it before. I I got together with um, some people who I think really know what they're doing in the shape of Jules Buckley and, and, and Chris Wheeler and the Heritage Orchestra and that and that um, gave me a lot of courage but really we didn't, we didn't we didn't know what we were getting ourselves into until we stepped out in the Albert Hall that night and within halfway through right here right now the whole of the Albert Hall was standing up clapping and never sat down and and it was a it just it was just one of those mo- career career defining moments really and then um yeah to 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 do it again as a hard ticket event when it's our own show and people are coming specially to see us at the O2 and and the Manchester Arena in Birmingham took it to a whole new level and then we saw the reaction to the record so every time we've taken this thing out people seem to like it <laughs> um oh, yeah. and now we're going to be doing it in a festival environment for the first time which is um obviously that's a you know I know all about festivals but and I've played them all my life, but never with with an orchestra. So um, hopefully it'll it'll get, you know add a different dimension to what we do, and it'll add a different dimension to to your event <laughs> in a good way. So obviously it's going to be a beautiful sunny weekend, and there'll be no rain. But to, to the um, <laughs> to the orchestra, they, they bring along like violin covers. So they have waterproofs to. Uh, I don't get actually under- no no. Hopefully you've got a, you've got an umbrella. <laughs> Yeah, got a, giant umbrella. a giant umbrella, sixty-five people umbrella, like one of those giant ones you see in Ibiza or something. Yeah, tar- oh, tarpaulin maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. big tarpaulin. Yeah. So it's sixty-four people in the orchestra and you. Um, that's right, or, or maybe I'm sixty-six. Yeah, it's um, you're number yeah, one. Pete. Yeah, it's it's, it's sixty-five <laughs> players. Actually, it's me and Jules, so it's sixty-seven. But um, I don't know. I, Actually, you might have caught me on the hop here because I think for your stage we might have ha- had to downsize by about five people or something. But um, watch this it's space. A, yeah, one of the things you can do at Common up. People is you can count to see if you're getting your money's worth. <laughs> it's a yeah, big, yeah, yeah. it's a big orchestra, and it will sound amazing. It will um, be the most people we've ever had on a stage at one of our festivals, that's for sure. So, um, yeah, you were just saying you obviously sold out the O2 with um, with the Ibiza Classics collaboration. I mean, I, mean, I should just give people at home people watching this the full title because it is i mean you also came up with the longest title for a festival headliner ever pete tom presents a beef of classics <laughs> by the heritage orchestra conducted by jules buckley that is like woo. yeah it's not, yeah, it's not post- punchy is it <laughs> <laughs> but so you did that at the um the o2 i mean obviously you've played to hundreds of thousands of people like literally in one one field or one beach or whatever, you've done huge, huge gigs. But, you know, that 20,000 people in the O2, is that a kind of different vibe? You know, how did that feel as opposed yeah, to Yeah, I mean, DJ? as much as I have done big shows, I've done big shows in the context of... I've, I've not done many bigger than that, to be honest. But, I, I mean, I have done the Love Parade in Berlin and we did the Love Parade in the UK. And, yeah, I've played, you know, main stages on some of the bigger festivals around the world. But, they're, but, but that's 
different to doing your own show. That, I mean, that was the biggest fundamental thing. You know, you do the O2 literally from the first car. But, you know, you go in there, you get you, you book, you get an empty room and you don't have anything. So you, you build it from the ground up. So the whole learning curve of building our own show, building our own stage, planning, you know, our own visuals of what would go, go with the songs and then obviously organising the set and getting it in the right order and involving the guests. So it was brilliant. I mean... Every loved every minute of it, but all all new territory to me. And um, yeah, it's amazing what you can pull off when you put your mind to it and, and surround yourself with some very talented people. So, yeah. um, I mean, I'm, I, it, it literally was. I was standing there like pinching myself um, halfway through the show, enjoying it and almost getting myself to, you know, you want to be. I mean, you are. I am. You know, you're obviously present, but it was just like just taking it all in. It was. It was some. Some. It was. Just mad. I'm trying to remember which. I think uh, we got into such a buzz, you know. We did, but we did Birmingham. I mean, when we, we, the way it evolved was, we put the O2 on sale, and and you do it, and you'll you'll understand this as a promoter. You do it in a way where you know where you're gonna um, you're gonna break even. You know, it's a very expensive show to put on. So we and we and you know you don't know how many people are going to come and see it. And so our initial ambition was, you know, the O2. It's a bit crazy to think we could do that. So we'll just do the lower bowl of the O2. And when I went on breakfast television back in March last year to announce it, by the time I'd literally left the building, um, we'd sold out the lower bowl. So then frantic phone calls and they put the upper bowl on sale. And by the end of the day, and by the time I got back to London, we sold out the upper bowl. So it's yeah. like, oh my God, you know, people actually want to see this thing. And it, you know, by then it was, you know, this show was going to be like 18 months just about after the prom. Um, so the fact that people were wanting to kind of invest in that show that far up front was, was just mind blowing. So then we were scrambling around trying to think, you know, can we get another date at the O2 and Justin Bieber was in there. And then we were thinking, you know, can we get another date anywhere? And luckily Manchester was free and Birmingham was free the night before. So one, and Birmingham, you know, thank God for Birmingham. It was an amazing show. It was a little bit smaller than the O2, but that was like our, you know, very public rehearsal for the O2. And then the O2 happened and then you're on a roll and, and Manchester was just like, well, that was the rap party of a very short tour. Yeah, um, yeah. And then and then we didn't want to stop. You know, it's like let's go to Ireland, let's go to Glasgow, let's go to Wales. Um, and of course, we we couldn't. So, but we, you do get in a different mindset when you're all together on the road like that, doing yeah. doing that thing. So, you know, it's it's amazing. Now we've got this opportunity to do to do a few festivals. We're going to take it to Ibiza for the first time. Um, we, we're taking it to Australia. Um, we. we Top secret meant to be. I don't know when this goes out. We're meant to be going to America, and then we're we're back doing five lives. Yeah, it's live. Okay. <laughs> no, no, it's not live. Yeah. And you're coming, obviously, to uh, to common people. So you're coming to my. It all old... starts. We're common people in 2017. Oh, yeah, it yeah. starts in my little hometown of Southampton. Yeah. Have you um, played Southampton recently, slash ever? Yeah, I mean, I have to look at the diary, but I mean, play. I, I mean, I, I obviously left the UK. And, and started living in LA from 2013, but I've been back and played Southampton a couple of times since. Um, very strong, you know, underground scene there, and real passion for for electronic music. So, you know, South Coast has always been strong, and Southampton's been probably at the centre of it. So, that's what we like to hear. And then, and then yeah. the day after, so you 65, you packing up your violins, your double bass, your cellos your deck, sticking it on the tour bus and you're heading up to Oxford. Um, have you, you've obviously played in Oxford over the years. Yeah, again, played in Oxford, um, uh, un- university town, but, you know, brilliant setting for a festival, brilliant weekend to be doing it, the bank holiday weekend, Sunday, nobody's got to go to work on Monday, no excuses, you know, I've got a lot of friends that live out that way as well, so I think it's going to be, um, it's going to have a whole different vibe for me as well, so... Yeah, I'm, gonna yeah. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna sit in both cities because I'm gonna sit in Southampton on Saturday. Then I'm I'm traveling up behind you guys on the Sunday. So uh, yeah, yeah, can't wait for that. Get your seat um, on the bus, so, Robbie. <laughs> mate, I want to yeah. be on that bus. So a lot of people probably don't know, but well, maybe they do. But the album went to number one in the UK charts. Um, do you think the Beat the Classics are ever gonna go out of fashion? I don't think so. I think you know the thing that made me most proud was you know, us DJs and us 
you know, we do have a little bit of chip on our shoulder, I think, about not getting taken seriously. You know, it goes back to the days of disco, really. Anything to do with dancing and partying, people just seem to think it, that's all it is, and it isn't a, a kind of um, just creative medium in the same way as, you know, right, you know, Lennon and McCartney or, you know, <laughs> you know the, the, the annals of, of rock and roll history. But I think doing things like this proves how important these songs and how important these tracks are to, 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 to so many people. And that does trickle down the generations, you know? So I think that the, the idea of performing these songs initially in, in the Albert Hall was to, 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 to pay homage to how great they were. Um, and that, and I think the reaction confirms that our suspicion was right, that they are pretty important to people. And, and um, I think, you know, we've already got 65,000 people, heading back to the arenas at the end of this year to to confirm that so you know, that's 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 the you know and especially with like something like robert miles passing last week and just you know that that was such a key track that in in the show so far and on the album and um again further testament just see the reaction to you know when he passed away and all, all, all the love that was out there for him so i think yeah. you know any, I anything say, just okay. doing you know anything to do justice to our you know bring bring our music and, and bring our culture and what it meant to 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 a wider recognition and can continually able to celebrate it that's what this is all about definitely definitely man so i mean you just mentioned robert miles children who robert miles who sadly passed away um that's obviously going to have a, a new meaning to that track for you but is there is there is there a track um aside from that that you guys are doing that is your favorite to do There's so many. Um, I think you know Robert. Rob, to playing Robert's song will will be certainly special. It'd be the first time we've performed it, obviously, um, since he's passed away. So, and um, hopefully we'll do him justice and 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 celebrate the memory of him. I think. I mean, Café de Mar just blew me away um, in terms of the reaction that got on the arena shows. But also, equally, I'm proud of you know. I didn't do it as, you know, a banging show start to finish. It was all about these pauses as well. Um, so the down-tempo tracks have been a revelation, you know, doing Belfast, doing yeah. Porcelain by Moby, doing Waiting All Night with Ella Rea in a, in a special, unique sunset version. Um, you know, I don't think we'll do it at the festival, but Rachel's song even from Blade Runner, which was part of Paul Oakenfold's original Goa mix. That's why it was in there, you know, editorially yeah. as an Ibiza classic, because I wanted to reflect Café Del Mar and, and Mambo and sunset culture as well. So I'm just as happy that though, and we are going to do some sunset tracks at Common People as well. So As the sun is as, setting. As, as long as we can see the sun. Maybe I'll bring my own sun. That'll be the only, <laughs> the only visual that we'll have. Yeah. <laughs> Funniest place in the UK. Yeah. Um, okay, man. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I've got a few quick bar questions. Uh, firstly, actually, we've got the world's biggest bouncy castle coming to um, Southampton. Last year, we thought, why don't we build the world's biggest bouncy castle? You're gonna have a little go on that, do you think? For sure. I'm always right. up for a bouncy castle. There you go, people. <laughs> Keep Tom on the world's biggest bouncy castle just before he goes on stage. Okay, so um, that's, that's quick... like Tony Robbins kind of psych yourself up. <laughs> that's what I'll do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A few uh, quick five questions to, to finish this off. Uh, strings or brass? Strings. Concert hall or club? Cellos. <laughs> Concert hall or club? I, I'm a, I've come from the clubs. I'll always be a club guy. Yeah. Uh, Mozart or Moby? Hmm. I think Moby. Yeah. Festival or arena? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'll ask I'm right now arena, but hopefully after common people, I'll be saying festival. Good man. Uh, sunshine or nighttime? Nighttime. And, well, uh, sun, actually, for DJing, I'm, I'm more. I'm more. I, I do like that six o'clock till midnight kind of as the sun sets. That's probably my absolute favourite time to play. This show has to be done in the dark, really, because of the visuals and, and the lights and everything. And I think it just. Yeah, that's the one thing about doing the festival is kind of insisted on at the moment that we, we need to be at night. Yeah, you are definitely at night headlining on people. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, Oxford or Southampton? You're not really that one. <laughs> one that I just put in. Let's just well, from a footballing it. analogy, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say Southampton because Arsenal finally won. Um, I like Oxford, I have to say. I mean, I like the whole part of the countryside, but hey, you know, 
They're both great places, obviously. We're playing both next weekend, so careful what you say. Yeah. But, Mr. Pete Tom, thank you so much for joining us. We can't wait to see your uh, your Ibiza Classics next weekend at Common People, Southampton and Oxford. Yeah, I'm just going to training. All right, Absolutely. thanks. Thanks, Robbie. Thanks so much, Pete. Thank see you. See you next week, man. Cheers, mate.